All right, everybody. Hello. What's up? I'll try to keep this one simp more simple than last year because last year I talked a lot and I didn't really know what I was saying. Top 10 albums of 2023. Let's get into it. And they're going to be here. So I don't know what's here right now. I'll, I'll put that in while I'm editing. Album number 10. We got Soul Elegy, Soul Elegy by Termina, which is an 8.4 out of 10. Soul Elegy is probably the heaviest album on this list, and I believe it to be probably one of the most interesting ones. Honestly, I like just about every track here, and the addition of Chris Turner's incredibly on-point drumming adds so much to the album. Great LP from the boys at Termina. Thank you for making me headbang a lot. Album number nine. We got Fatalism by Polaris, which I gave an 8.5 out of 10. Obviously, I had to put this one on the list. Not only did I love the record, of course, but I, but I also feel it's my duty to recognize the passing of Polaris guitarist Ryan Sue. I think Nightmare is one of the most solid metalcore tracks I've heard in recent years. With all that being said, rest in peace, Ryan. Let's have a moment of silence to remember him before continuing. Next up, at number... How do you do math? Eight. <laughs> we got Heavener by Invent Am Animate. A an animate. Heavener by Invent Animate. 8.6 out of 10. Well, here we are. The jet terrain of 2023 has arrived. Man, this album gets so heavy and yet so beautifully melodic at times. All the hype for this thing is absolutely deserved. Thank you, Invent Animate, for this masterpiece. Also, that art artwork goes pretty hard. Number seven, The Fear of Fear EP by Spirit Box. Yeah, yeah, I know it's an EP. And this is one of two EPs on this list. However, I believe both of these are so good that they, that they deserve these spots. Anyway, this concept EP is amazing. And after listening to it a couple times, I realized that every song except Cellar Door has a recurring vocal motif, which is the um, too close slash too late lyrics. Cool little Easter egg there. Also, this is Heavy's Balls. <laughs> All right, coming in next at number si did I do six. Six, right? Yeah, six. Dying Wish. Symptoms of Survival, 8.8 .8 out of 10. Dying Wish is a band that I discovered through The Devil Wears Prada, since the vocalist Emma is dating the vocalist of Prada, Jeremy DePoyster. This album is absolutely incredible <laughs> and relentlessly heavy. Lost in the Fall is probably one of, my, one of the best songs of the year. The only complaint I have about this record like, I'm gonna be honest, is it kind of sounds the same at a certain point. However, Paved in Sorrow, which is kind of like a song that's in the middle of, of the album, so it like, splits it up into two halves. It's a nice melodic track uh, that solves that issue for a bit. Amazing record, and I'm excited to see what they do next to it, because this is their own, this is their second album, I think. Right? Because Fragments of Bitter Memory was from 21. Yeah, this is their second album. Yeah. All right, number five, top five, coming your way next. Oh, yeah, oh, all right, Veil of Maya, M M opening bracket M, closing bracket other, eight point nine out of ten. Veil of Maya released probably one of their heaviest records yet. Synthwave Vegan and Tokyo Chainsaw are probably my favorite tracks. Lucas's vocals are probably the most brutal ever. <laughs> I absolutely love this record, and I will marry the members of this band. Uh, Cassio, that wasn't in the script. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Number four, The Surface by Beartooth. Nine out of ten. When I die. Very 
Beartooth came out with a very controversial album this year. <laughs> some people hate it, and some people love it. Since this is my number four record of the year, it's safe to say that I'm one of the ones who love it. This album has single-handedly improved my mental state, and helped shape me into a more confident version of myself. My favorite lyrics on this album are, When I die, I'll know I didn't just live, I was alive. And you know, some people might, might think that's cringe, but honestly, I'm so happy for Caleb and his whole recovery. He's, you know, might love myself, like that entire song kind of just sums it up. I, I love this record. It's so uplifting, and you don't always hear that in this genre of music. So thank you, Beartooth, for the surface. And also, also the they featured Hardy on a song. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but that one sucked. <laughs> Number three, top three. We got the Perfect Strangers EP by Set for Tomorrow. 9.3 out of 10. Alright, so I made a video reacting to the two non-singles on this EP when it came out, and I absolutely love them. This EP is genuinely some of the best metalcore of the year and the vocals and production really stand out as exceptional. Thank you, Pattering Ryan, for your service in Separate Tomorrow, and thank you for featuring on my song. I love you. <laughs> I love The Beast of Burden, which is the last track, so much, dude. You know, this this EP is just so good. Like, and, and you know, they're, they're a much smaller band than the rest of the bands on this list, so props to them. Okay, so it's funny, because I just said that Separate Tomorrow is this it's one of the smallest bands on this list, but then we have Behold Here's Poison, coming in with number two with their album, Innocent, which I gave 9.6 out of 10. All right, number two time. Behold, Here's Poison came out of nowhere and released an incredible album. No, I'm not biased because, because I'm part of the band now. I wasn't when this was released, lay off. Waves and Let's Ask Jasper are some of my favorite tracks of the year, and this is just a solid metalcore album that showcases their heavy side in a much more mature way. Thank you, Behold Ears Poison, and I will now produce you. I, lo I love you, Tanner. I love you, Devin. I love the Evan, Brigham, whatever, Zayden. Okay. And the number one best album of 2023 is, drumroll please, That hurt. Periphery 5, Gent is Not a Genre, by Periphery. Okay, <laughs> buckle up. I have a lot to say. Bottom line is, I believe Periphery 5, Gent is Not a Genre, to be the best, most invigorating, most emotional, and most awe-inspiring musical experiences I have had in my entire lifetime. The last track, Thanks No Blow, is either my second favorite or favorite song of all time. The other one would be To The Key of Evergreen by The Devil Was Funny. This record is, in my opinion, by far the best record of the year. This is by far the best record of all time. Forget recency bias, it's almost been a year since it came out. Whenever I listen to this album, I always start at Wildfire, and I always end at Thanks No Blow. It's impossible for me to stop listening. You know, the whole thing. It's impossible to stop the experience while listening. The different emotions I've experienced listening to this masterpiece of a record will forever be cherished in my mind. Thank you, Periphery, for creating this album. Thank you, everyone, for listening to my rant. Please consider subscribing and leaving a comment to let me know your thoughts. And if you were expecting War of Being by Tesseract to be on this list, no. Oh, also if you were- oh, I have something to say. I was gonna- I was gonna do honorable mentions, but then I realized that I don't listen to enough music to do- to do honorable mentions. <laughs> but, um, I know a lot of people were probably expecting a like, a gent listener to have Take Me Back to Eden by Sleep Token on this list. Man, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what, I don't know why I'm so different, but I hate that album. I think that's one of the worst albums I've ever heard. Obviously, you're entitled to your own opinion and everything, 
but I just I just can't stand his voice and I can't stand the weird genre com combinations on it. I've listened to it a lot and I, I still don't like it. <laughs> Either way, thank you for listening and I just decided I would hate on the band. <laughs>